Hey, what's up everybody? Um, in this video, I wanted to talk about some myths that cyclists kind of believe about other cyclists. I found over the years of riding in a broad community and then having this YouTube channel that cyclists tend to view cycling through a very narrow lens, the lens of how they ride their bike and don't necessarily consider that people ride their bikes in uh, many very different ways. So, you know, I welcome like the diversity of opinion on this channel. I think it's cool because I do a bunch of different things, vintage bikes, touring, uh, I'm, I mountain bike, even though I'm not good at it. I do enter some gravel races, even though I'm not really fast, that we get all kinds of different opinions. And I like that. My mind has been changed about things over the years, a lot from this channel, other just from riding with people who ride differently than me. And I welcome that. But these are some myths that I think uh, should be dispelled. And starting off, um, the first one is the idea that everybody who rides a bike wants to go fast. Or I get it a lot when I'm building a bike on the channel and I'll get a lot of comments like, well, why would you do that when you could just get this and make it like this? And then it would be these bars would be, and it's, it's all these little things about like speed. And it's like, that's not always the intention. Um, actually, most of the time for me, it's not, um, I'm building this bike right here, this gunner and you know, it's their adventure bike. It's their bike packing bike, backpacking, bike packing bike. Yeah. And they, the idea is not to build it for speed. I'm putting sweep bars on it. You know, it's a frame that's built to be loaded down with gear. And my now that I've toured a bunch, I'm trying to build a bike that would be comfortable and really good at going on tours and bike packing. So, you know, speed is not the issue to me um, in this build or in other builds. You know, I do have a fast bike. I do have a bike that's kind of slammed and stuff. If I want to do that, I can do that. But yeah, and then there's other people too who are just like, it's not even on their radar, the idea of going fast. You know, when you go and ride one of the bike trails on the weekend, you see that couple in their 20s who's out riding in the summer. They're just out there enjoying themselves. This is their Saturday. They're just having fun. Or when you see, you know, a group that are in their 80s, you know, uh, speed is not speed's not the issue. Uh, they are out there just to have a good time. I, I found it really weird in a couple other ways, too. So GCN had posted this uh uh, clip from one of their videos on Instagram about like a handlebar bag. And the presenter was like, he doesn't like them. Why wouldn't you just put everything in your Jersey pockets, you know? And the comments to me were so funny from all these roadies on like, it's like putting a brake on the front of your bike. And one, the science behind that's just wrong. What do you think be is behind these bar bags? Um, you know, <laughs> the idea that like, you know, all this like, yes, if you put like a high end fancy race bike in a wind tunnel with nothing on it, it's going to be way faster than, you know, an upright Dutch bike or whatever with a handlebar bag. But that doesn't matter in most realities. But the thing is, even if it did, like, especially like say riding in the winter, I'm going to bring the stuff I need. I'm not saying to unnecessarily weigh yourself down, but yeah, I put a bar bag on that has a down jacket and I have room for layers I want to take off or put on like you know you get a flat tire I have a down jacket to put on and stay warm like my goal is to have the stuff I need with me because even if the aerodynamics were as much of a factor as some people think seem to think they are they don't matter to me because I'd rather be prepared because I'm out there to have a good time anyways say even if I do want to go fast it what is who am I who am I racing? Only myself. So I know what was on my bike that day. So yeah, I just find that kind of stuff a little bit ridiculous. And then, another way that this is, I've seen it like manifest itself in comments is on like my um, Gap and CNO trail videos. So when we went to ride the CNO trail, I had built up this old Marin and uh, an old mountain bike, but drop bar style and all that. But I put uh, gravel Kings that I think are like 2.1 on there. And this one comment that really stood out to me um, that uh, signifies a whole demographic who talks about this and like groups and all that was 2.1 tires are overkill for the CNO trail. And I thought about that and I'm just like, what, what does that even mean? One, there's this interesting element of people who think like they're toughing it out by always going with the hardest thing to ride, I think. But then there's also that mentality that still exists. And this is another side myth here that like skinny, the skinniest, highest tire pressures you can get by on are always the best. One, that's just not true. Um, so the CNO trail is actually very rough and rocky uh, towards Washington, DC, gravelly and other parts. And then if it rains, I that didn't for us, but I hear it becomes a mud pit. So one, I don't actually believe the tires are overkill or slower or any of that kind of stuff. But it's also such a weird mentality in a different way. So I was thinking of this analogy. Think someone's shopping in a furniture store and they are looking at this big, plush, soft leather couch and they're just like, oh yeah. 
It would be like someone going, you don't need to be that comfortable. You're wrong. And it's like, no, you don't know what that guy wants. Like, if you want to set up your living room to be like this uber cool, mid-century modern living room, go for it. But you can't tell someone else they shouldn't be comfortable. Like, And that's exactly what I feel about this overkill idea. Even if you are a diehard and believe in the skinny tire thing and all that kind of stuff, it's just totally irrelevant. Like when me and my friends go on a bike tour, it's our vacation. We're going out there to sightsee. We're going out to drink good beer, get good food, have good conversations, just, you know, yeah, see new places. Like speed is not an element. So to say my bike is overkill for something, one is just factually wrong and also doesn't even make sense. It's this thing that has been held on to by a lot of cyclists for a long time that just doesn't is irrelevant and just doesn't make any sense at all. So yeah, I know people always like to take some of this stuff and then say that like, since I'm saying this attitude, it means I hate the other attitude. And that's not true or the other perspective. Like I watch road racing. I watch cyclocross. I watch local cross races. I actually love it. Um, I understand why if you're at the pointy end of the Tour de France over a three week grand tour, or you're trying to win a breakaway, you're going to have the most high tech fastest tested bike there is, uh, because that's your job, you know, that's like very important at such a high level. When you bring this down to even normal riding and even normal people who just like, even when I just want to pedal fast with my friends, like the difference between some of the stuff we're talking about becomes really minor at human pace speeds. But again, I still think in general, that's irrelevant because a lot of people are not out for speed. And I, this quote that popped in my head is like, speed only matters if you want to go fast. You know, there it is. Like that's, that's all it comes down to. This kind of ties in then with the next thing I think is a myth. And this one comes also from different comments and different things I've seen is that like people only ride bikes to get exercise. And that's just not true. So the, the way I've seen this kind of like I, I'd caught a video on YouTube where this guy was talking about e-mountain bikes. It just the algorithm served it up. And he was kind of talking about like the gatekeepers at the mountain bike park or the people who would like be like, well, that's cheating or like you're not getting a workout. And it's like, yeah, you know, there's mountain bike parks where people take ski lifts to the top and bomb down the hill. Like they're not there to get a workout. They're there to have fun. You know, there's people who are just adrenaline junkies. It's just like, that's it. And then also with the e-bike thing, like I was having a conversation, I've had this conversation a number of times, it's the same kind of like, well, that's cheating, or I know people who ride bikes and, you know, they don't actually get a workout on them. One, I think, again, we're talking about something that's kind of false. There are people who ride pedal assist e-bikes and still get a good workout. Um, that doesn't matter. The thing is, I have friends who only use the bike to commute. They're not looking to be part of a cycling community. They're not trying to beat anyone's times. They're not out there to even get exercise. They're, they're riding the bike because it's fun. Um, they enjoy it, and they're riding it instead of being in a car. And what's better than that? One less car on the road is always a good thing. So to me, the analogy to this one would be like saying someone who takes the train is cheating. You know, like, <laughs> that's ridiculous. If you live in a place where the train is the most efficient way to get around and that's how you want to get to work, you're not, I don't think you're cheating, <laughs> are you? So again, I just, a weird thing that people think you're only trying to get exercise when you get on your bike. And I will say too, there are like Saturdays in the summer when me and my friends set off on a ride. We're riding along at whatever pace, call it party pace, uh, you know, and we're going to get some food, we're going to drink some beers, we're going to go sit in the woods somewhere, then we're going to ride somewhere else, you know, maybe we got brunch that day, maybe we go out and ride 40, 50 miles. But at the end of the day, it was probably like, you know, you get exercise when you ride a bike, but zero sum, you know, on like a fitness level or like losing weight or anything like that. So yeah, it's just a big myth that people are only riding bikes to get exercise. People ride bikes because they're really fun and in a lot of places, they're very practical. You know, they're the best way to get around. So this last one kind of ties in with the first two, uh, a lot more with the speed thing, I think. But the idea that everything has to be expensive in cycling or that you always have to have the latest and greatest, or if you're trying to get into it, you have to go to the bike shop and buy a brand new bike. Uh, nothing could be farther from the truth. I've already made my, I think it's my most popular videos about how anyone could go bike touring. And the bike I use is a bike that almost has no value. Um, outside the money that I've kind of put in it to upgrade it. But to me, the whole point is like, like there's this whole like YouTube has like, you know, 
reviews do really well. And like, I'm into looking at what comes out and all that kind of stuff and the latest and the greatest. But like this whole thing, like when I make a video, like I just made one about uh, this old Peugeot I have and I build it up, I bought it for like 40 bucks and then I build it up with parts I had around here. And like someone comments like, oh, that bike sucks. And I'm like, it sucks because I took it out and had a lot, a lot of fun on it. And I could say the same thing of another vintage French bike I have that I put 5,000 miles on and I bought it from a scrapper and I probably had had like during that 5,000 miles, like $200 into the bike. Like, you know, there are ways to get into cycling and not everything has to be fancy. Like, so one, if you're not trying to race, you don't need some high end top race bike. That doesn't make any sense for you. But even if you just want to go out and ride a bike, it doesn't have to be new. There are affordable new options. I mean, I, I do recommend against getting that department store bike, as we used to call it. Now people call them Walmart bikes or whatever, because those, they're just future landfill. They're hard to fix up. They're just made out of junk components. But there are companies like Fairdale and, um, you know, there's group set companies now like Microshift that you could get affordable, decent new stuff. But I also, I'd always prefer a better, older bike than a newer, you know, less quality bike. And that could go other ways where there are people always buy the latest and greatest. So, you know, eBay and Craigslist, you could get something fairly recent, fairly modern. You know, if you're also someone who's like more handy and likes to tinker, you could do what I do, get something older, put, you know, some nice newer parts on there. So there's just so many ways to go about it. And there are so many good bikes out there. And I hate the gatekeeping of like me being into vintage bikes. Like if it's not a top of the line, it's trash. You know, like I've, I've been to, I've been to France and watched how people are riding around these cheap old Peugeots, like everywhere that were they're like dads or even their grandparents. And they're still using them as their commuters to get around because it's the bike that's there. And stuff with even cheap stuff back then was just built with more quality than the cheap stuff is built with today. And so again, this is like the other side. I'm not saying don't have that stuff. Like a super light, expensive bike feels really fun and feels really fast. And there's also companies like a lot of people, you have the money and want to support like some local companies or made in your area, you know, stuff here, like people like, like Chris King and White Industries and, you know, Paul Components. This stuff is expensive, but they're supporting something they care about. It's quality. It's going to last. You know, so I'm not saying don't do that. I just made a video about upgrading, upgrading my gravel bike. And I put components on there that, you know, four years ago, I never would have thought I'd spend 240 bucks on handlebars. I'd be like, that's a waste. But as I now ride over 6,000 miles a year, I know I'm going to get the use out of stuff. And I've learned what I really care about in a bike. So I don't like the idea of throwing good money after bad. So that's why I say don't buy like absolute trash that is not going to hold up or you're just going to throw away or not enjoy riding. But at the same time, there is a level where you could buy something that will work for you. And then maybe down the road, you add components to it um, and stuff like that. You know, this is a guy who hasn't bought a new bike frame since 2001. Anyways, so I know, uh, <laughs> I know people will take this the wrong way, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of ways to look at cycling and, you know, speed, um, money, and exercise aren't the only ones. There's a lot. And I think this is a prevailing attitude and kind of, you know, you know, more of, you know, the center of the United States. And I do get a lot of this from people I know in the UK that like think sports cycling is all there is and people wearing kit and being all tucked up is the only kind of cycling. Uh, there's not, there's tons and people do it for a lot of different reasons. Anyways, I hope someone enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one.